Welcome back to Bianchi Law Talk on Facebook Live. Uh, the picture you see behind me is of Christopher Watts. He is a defendant who has gained national attention for the murder of, in this picture you can see, his 15-week uh, pregnant wife, as well as his two beautiful children that are over each of my shoulders. Uh, the case has gained national attention because uh, Watts was one of those guys who went out there claiming that uh, he came home and the kids and the wife were gone, and ultimately they found the wife in a shallow ditch and the two beautiful young girls in a barrel filled with oil, uh, of all things, just submerged in that. Uh, ultimately, police made the arrest of Christopher Watts, and he has pled guilty to avoid the death penalty, and his sentencing is scheduled tomorrow. But there could be a little bit of a curveball with this sentencing um, based on some legal issues, and he may attempt to withdraw his plea. We just don't know that yet. But tomorrow, I'll be on the Long Crime Network from 12 to 3, and we'll be covering the Christopher Watts uh, sentencing. And so the reason I'm doing why people murder is as a homicide prosecutor and a person who's defended people that have been charged with murder for over 30 years in my career, uh, it's kind of been a fascinating evolution in my mind. There's a sensibility when I was a young assistant prosecutor handling homicide cases, in my mind, a feeling uh, emotionally that the cases have just gotten a lot worse uh, over the years. And so I started to tick off the cases that I've tried uh, and, and handled over the years and tried to find out what the motivations for these cases were. And I came down to some basic things as to why people murder. Ordinary people living a normal life and all of a sudden now they're in the throes of a murder case and murder charges. And and the one thing that's always fascinated me about this is that there are no obvious winners. Uh, kids are usually are parentless after something like this. The families are destroyed. The collateral consequences of these cases are really brutal. And I've helped many victims' families through them. Uh, and even though the criminal justice system can't make it completely right, certainly by any stretch of the imagination because the folks are gone, you do the best you can within the parameters of the criminal justice system to bring justice or, or defend a person for that matter um, who may be guilty, as uh, we have often seen in the cases we're covering on the Long Crime Network, of something less. But this case is of a special vintage because of its absolute brutality in the relationship of Watts to just wiping his family out. So why do people murder? So I started doing this list. And I basically came up with fights uh, where it just kind of explodes and one person murders another person, drugs in all of its forms, whether the person is under addiction or whether or not drug deals gone bad, uh, or drug dealers uh, protecting their territory. That's always been a big one. Jealousy, since the time of the caveman, we've seen that, and that's all throughout the Bible and human nature. Anger, just pent up outrage over something that somebody did and a feeling of resentment attempts to cover things up like illegal activity, perhaps a uh, having a paramour, uh, bribery, somebody's being bribed. There's all sorts of reasons that people are trying to cover up either to avoid the repercussions from law enforcement or their reputation in the community. And then we have just the outright senseless, uh, some that just make no sense, and there's no motive for it really, and then the twisted, as I call it. And in all the years that I've done this, there have only been three cases I, I, I've analyzed this with, I could say the people were just generally demented, twisted, uh, sick people that would, if given the opportunity, murder again. It's a very small percentage given the number of murder cases I've handled on both sides of the aisle. So, um, you know, I, I, but, but yet I had this sensibility, like, why is it that I feel like the murders are worse today than they were when I first started prosecuting cases? And I came to the conclusion, and, and the reason, I, I have to be honest, that this, this started, like, coming to mind on the Christopher Watts case is because I did an HLN uh, hit with uh, Susan Hendricks this week, and she was saying that the mother and father of Christopher Watts don't believe he did this, and is this anything that is... Uh, unusual that people in the family can't believe the person did it. No, it's not unusual. The people know the person typically in a murder case very differently. They know them as a loving person, a person that they raised, and they find it unbelievable. They always, I, I have had so many murder cases that I've prosecuted 
we're up to and including where the community is actually agitated at you. They don't know all the evidence you do. And ultimately they come to the conclusion, oh my God, the person really did it. But they're so convinced it's out of the character of that individual. And many, many times it is. Sometimes it's not, but many times it is. Um, and so Susan Hendricks asked this question at HLN. And we discuss questions like this all the time in the Law and Crime Network. And I started like thinking to myself, let me quantitate why it is that I have a feeling that things are worse today than they were before. Hey, Bridget, I see you're on. And Michelle, thanks, uh, thanks for joining. Um, and, and the reasons I think that they are is it comes down to less provocation. Even though it still centers around fights and drugs and jealousy and anger and cover-up and the senseless and the twisted, if you will, there seems to be less of a provocation. It seems like you could get your arms around it in the old days as to why it was that the murder occurred. You'd prosecute it. You knew what the motive was. But today, it seems to be people are triggered for far, far less than what it used to be when I was prosecuting them 30 years ago. And the other thing that I note that's very different is the brutality of the murders. It, it, it's, especially when I was prosecutor in Morris County, we had some of the most, I, I remember one of my friends that I brought up from Hudson, who was a very skilled, uh, you know, assistant prosecutor was going through the murder uh, review of our office of the cases that we had pending and called me up on a Friday night and said, these are some of the most horrific, horrible, heinous homicide cases that I've ever read. And they were. And so it gets back to, even though the motivations were all those things I ticked off before, it just seems that the senselessness and the brutality of the murders themselves are definitely much more severe than they used to be. I don't know why that is, but I'd be interested in your opinion. Is it social media? Is it a breakdown in the culture? Is it mental illness and addiction issues, which clearly are in most of these cases, in many of these cases? Is, is that, are those issues getting worse? Is it the senselessness because we publicize so much that uh, of, of brutal things on in games with kids and on TV and things that never were published before that we've become numb uh, to this? And I see my friend Kelly Taylor Sisk is, is on. We, we were young pups in the prosecutor's office in Hudson County when we were handling these cases. Um, and again, you just don't see the level of senselessness and brutality that you see with them today, at least in my opinion. So I'd be interested in what your opinion is about that. And Christopher Watts. I mean, what causes a man to take, uh, if, if apparently the, the motive may be here, we'll find out more about the motive tomorrow, that he was having extramarital affairs with other people. And that's what I'm talking about. This is something that is ridiculous. You, you don't want to be with the woman. If that's the motive, then, then leave her. You don't kill your pregnant wife and your two beautiful angel daughters. Look at those little girls. And, 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 and that is not the solution for you to save your reputation and get out of things. This is exactly what I'm talking about and why I think it is that this case has captivated you know, the country because of its senselessness and brutality from a person who never exhibited any of these signs before. I see, Bridget, uh, you put down here that mental health uh, brush off and playing Americans against one another, I think, plays into it. I, I think you're right. Um, I think that there's, there's something going on culturally with us that we are not addressing with regard to pitting ourselves against one another, hateful commentary, people that just snap and no longer have any sense of right or wrong and can do something as horrible as what Christopher Watts is alleged to have done. Hey guys, listen, thanks as always for supporting the Bianchi Law Talk on Facebook Live. I'd love if you would share this video with your family and friends. Again, the Christopher Watts case will be sentenced tomorrow. Um, and uh, I agree, Bridget, everyone is angry as a populist. I mean, I, I think that I talk to many people that are having difficulty sleeping at night. And I talked to some psychologists who have said that the increase in anti-anxiety medication, which was already a multi-billion dollar business, for those of you who have anxiety, don't think that you are alone. They're making that kind of money for a reason. But the psychologists have been telling me that people have been extremely, extremely anxious, unable to sleep, things of that nature. So, and this is something that's gone on for many, many, many years. And, and we need to find a way as a community to address it and allow people to 
um, not do or to do what we can to make people not do these things. So I'll be on uh, Law and Crime Network tomorrow from 12 to 3. We'll be covering the Christopher Watts sentencing. You just go on lawandcrime.com. There's multiple platforms from Pluto TV and all sorts of things that you can see on that website, or you can live stream it directly from that website. And I want to thank uh, Susan Hendricks from HLN for asking a very thought-provoking question uh, that actually took me out of my space as a lawyer for a moment to actually analyze why is it that people are committing such senseless and brutal murders at a rate far more um, prolifically, if you will, or dastardly than they were, in my opinion, 30 years ago? Give me your points of view, and thanks for those who have joined, and uh, we'll see you next week at 5 o'clock for another version of Bianchi Law Talk on Facebook Live. And if you get a chance, subscribe to my YouTube channel in aptly uh, entitled Bianchi Law Talk. We'll see you next week. Bye.